You ever have one of those days where you do everything and anything other than the thing you should be doing? <laughs> so yeah, I am way behind on my book reviews. I've been reading. I just haven't been reviewing. I've had all kinds of stuff going on. And so I have decided to make a conscious decision to procrastinate and ask you, have you seen this? So I'm not going to talk about everything that I've been watching, but I figured I'd talk about quite a few things since it's been a while since I've done one of these. Some of this is stuff that I just finished watching, might be currently watching, and some of it is stuff that I, I finished watching. And so I just you know want to know, have you seen this? Um, obviously, the first thing I want to mention is um, what if? Um, the Marvel series on Disney Plus that has basically taken all of these, um, the MCU superheroes that uh, have become so popular lately and thrown them into this animated world of what if, introducing many people to the character of the Watcher for the first time. And I was very excited about this and I was not disappointed. Um, there were some episodes that I enjoyed more than others, but what I absolutely loved was that at the end, they all came together, like all these different realities, it, it all made sense. And I feel like everything that they've been doing um, with the Disney Plus stuff is just leading up to this next wave of the MCU um, movies that are coming out. So we all know that the multiverse is gonna be a thing. So if you watched um, the WandaVision show and if you watched Loki, um, everything has been kind of slowly adding up to this whole, you know, getting people, I guess, used to the idea of the multiverse. Um, even though the um, Spider-Man movie really kind of did <laughs> the animated Spider-Man movie. But still, I'm excited about what this whole um, multiverse thing is going to go with the whole live action thing with, you know, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and everything. So um, I highly recommend What If. I know some people... Um, like the live action stuff and don't really get into the cartoons but if you're following all the live action stuff it's totally worth watching because many of the voices are voiced by the actors so um, that might help bridge that gap for people who just can't get into animation but regardless I loved it and um, <clears throat> I'm really excited to see where they go next another thing that I watched on Disney plus that um <laughs> not, I may not be able to sell everybody on this, I don't care, was um, Doug Days. So Doug is the dog from the Up movie who has the collar that helps him um, express verbally the things that he's thinking. And so he and the old man go back and live together. And it's all about his adventures being a pet. Um, and that's new for him because, you know, he was raised out in the wild with the crazy inventor and stuff. If you haven't seen the movie Up, I highly recommend it, but I will let you know that the first part of the movie is unnecessarily sad and depressing, and it's just so horrible, but it gets better, like horrible in a good way, not in a bad way, like it's, it's, it's genius the way they did that movie, it's like the saddest thing ever, but then it gets better, and so Doug is one of the results of that movie, and Doug Days, I was just mad that there was only five episodes, I was like, I need more Doug Days in my life. So anyway, um, also on Disney Plus, I've been spending a lot of time on Disney Plus. I never thought I was one of those people who was like a huge Disney fan. Don't get me wrong. I like Disney, but there's also things about Disney that I don't like. So I've, like I said, I've just never considered myself a huge Disney, but I am liking and enjoying the content on Disney Plus. With that said, I've been watching a lot of their um, shorts. Um, it, there's Loop. Um, I can, um, <clears throat> if you don't know what I do for a living, um, I work with children on the spectrum and anytime I come across a story that somehow relates to that, and I think that was um, the loop one, definitely, definitely hit home on that one. Um, there's another one, I can't remember the name of it, I didn't write it down because I watched it a long time ago um, by a little boy who flies and anyway. So I also watched something called 20 something. That one was really cute and Nona. So those are um, quick shorts that you could check out if you want to, if you have access to Disney Plus and they are shorts. So you can watch all three of them and you're only gonna waste like 15 minutes of your life, but it'll be entertaining.
<laughs> the other thing that I did was I binged watched four seasons of My Hero Academia. The only reason why I didn't watch the fifth season was because I guess it's currently happening now or just finished or whatever. So it's not yet dubbed. Now, I'm not the kind of person who won't watch something just because it's not dubbed. However, because I binged watched four seasons of it dubbed, I could not watch the, the fifth season um, with subtitles because it's not like it's just the subtitles. It's the subtitles and the voices of these other people. And that was just too distracting. So I'll have to get caught up on season five of My Hero Academia later on. But um, I waited way too long to check out. I mean, I've been hearing about it for years. Everybody has been saying, you need to watch My Hero Academia. I, I know I needed to watch it. And I finally did it. I don't know what took me so long, but it's totally worth it. And I'm a fan. Um, I also finally watched the second season of One Punch Man. And I need more One Punch Man in my life. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, on Netflix, um, they released the third season of Manifest. And that was very exciting and exhilarating right up until the very end, where it wasn't necessarily disappointing, but it was like, oh. I'm not going to spoil it. Like if you watch the show, then you know that if they actually do this fourth season that everybody keeps talking about, there will be some character changes. But that's to be expected with a storyline that's based on, I guess, time travel, kind of. I mean, it's it's something. It's magic. It's science. It's all this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I breezed right through Manifest. Um, that was... That was nice. Um, something else on Netflix that my husband and I, we breezed through the first season and the second season is out now. And this is more animation for you people who don't like animation. I don't know what to tell you, um, but um, Kid Cosmic. So yeah, we are on the second, almost finished with the second season of Kid Cosmic and it's really great. We, we watch a lot of um, different type of content. I don't know if you can tell that, you know, live action stuff, animated stuff, mature stuff, it just depends. We watch a lot of the animated stuff during dinner because I have a very sensitive stomach. And so those are usually the safe things for us to watch while we eat. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're watching Kids Kid Cosmic and we're enjoying it. I personally am getting caught up on the phenomenon that has already just gone past me of the new Voltron. Um, as an adult, I tried to go back and watch the Voltron that I watched as a kid, and I could not do it. I mean, the nostalgia was still there. I remember how great I thought it was at a, as a kid, but it does not hold up over time. <laughs> it's heartbreaking to try to watch the original Voltron now. But um, of course, I've been seeing for years that Netflix had, had rebooted Voltron, and I was just like, eh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And then one day, I was like, I need something to put on in the background. I was doing something. I don't remember what it was. And so I just put it on, but then I couldn't do it because I was actually interested in what was happening. I was like, shoot, this did not work out, but it's still good. So, oh, well, this is another way for me to waste my time. There's eight seasons of Voltron and I am currently on season seven. So that is, I've been watching that a lot. Anytime I've needed to like decompress within the last three weeks, all I've pretty much been watching is Voltron. So yes, I know I'm an adult. I still go to work and pay my bills, but I'm allowed to watch Voltron to decompress. And once I finish that, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll have to figure it out. Um, something else on Netflix that I may not finish because I have currently stopped watching it. It's not something that I can recommend, but I also can't not recommend it is Black Mirror. <clears throat> Very mature content. Um, it started out, I was thinking, so this is kind of like Outer Limits, um, Twilight Zone, but much more like mature, up to date, with a very heavy focus just on like technology. So I was all for it, you know, um, and, and you know, every story is different. So I was like, this, this could be good. And I, at first, I really appreciated the variety. I didn't like everything that I was seeing, but I liked the variety. You know, I liked storytelling. So even though one story wasn't great, the next one was, you know, and even the ones that weren't great, it was still very interesting, some very deep concepts and things to think about until it got to the point where it just started to be disturbing. And 
I don't like that. I mean, I don't want to watch something disturbing just for the purpose of it being disturbing. Just like when it comes to things that are just all shock value or it's just all um, just naked people all the time or just cursing all the like, if it's just too much, then it's just too much. And I feel like that's where I am with Black Mirror. There were two or three episodes that I was just like, I, I was disappointed that I watched those. I was like, had I known ahead of time if I had gone on to like maybe IMDb and read about those episodes, I might not have watched them. Um, but then I got to one episode that was just so truly disturbing. I stopped watching it and I have not gone back to it. Um, clearly, I could skip past that episode and watch more. But it's at this point, I don't know if it's worth the risk. I mean, granted, I know that the pattern of this show is that some shows are lighter, some of their, you know, are darker. So there's, you know, high probability that the next episode won't be as, you know, bad as that one was. But I don't know. I just, the creators of this show lost me. I don't understand the purpose of creating something that disturbing. And I don't understand people who want to watch something that disturbing. So, I mean, if you like it, that's that's totally fine that you like it. I Please don't ask me about it. I don't want to talk about it. I may not ever finish Black Mirror. But if you did, great. Let me know if there was something that was worth seeing. Maybe I'll skip ahead and get to that. But I'm, I'm over it already. Um, <laughs> something else that I've been watching to kind of you know, have it in the background, I was hoping I would enjoy it more. And I may have mentioned this before, is Punky Brewster. And I can't remember which app that's on. I think it's the Peacock or something like that. So this is the Punky Brewster, not necessarily reboot. It's um, it's the same character playing Punky. She's just older, so I guess it's more of like a sequel. And so um, it's it's cute, but it's it's still like it, <laughs> it's even though it's the Peacock and much respect to the Peacock, I feel like it's like a Nickelodeon show. It's just it's just super silly but not bad. So I do, we'll play it in, you know, if I'm in the background and I'll catch what's happening. I know what's going on. I just, I don't know. I just don't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but I still can dig it. Um, on, one show that I'm just like so frustrated with right now, my niece and I have been bonding over our frustration of this show. And that is the HBO Max show Titans, which used to be a DC, I think, app original, and now it's on HBO Max. And um, this is some, you know, somebody's modern take on the Teen Titans. I feel like the people who write for this show have never read a Teen Titans comic. And I think maybe they went out and bought some random comics and just kind of skimmed through them and <laughs> said, okay, I think we know what to do. It's just... It, my husband and I have gotten to the point where we both realize we're going to keep watching the show because of this one basic principle. Well, I have to watch the next one because I watched the last one. If I hadn't watched the last one, then I wouldn't have to watch the next one. That's, that's totally why we're watching this show now. Um, if they do another season, we are likely not to watch another season unless some, by some miracle, this season ends better than it has been going. So um, I'll just make one comment. Um, I'm not usually the type of person that gets so attached to the different characters, but because these are comic book characters that I've known and seen in other, I'm already, I was already kind of attached to some of them, and there is a relationship that has developed on the Titans, and I could care less about this relationship, and the crazy thing about it is there, there are so many reasons why under normal circumstances, I would love this, but I just really don't care. I just don't. I should, but I don't. So moving on, I think that's everything on my list. There was one thing I was saving until the end. So I was late to the game discovering Ted Lasso and I, I love Ted Lasso. <laughs> I, I don't care about sports in any way whatsoever, um, except for hockey. I do enjoy hockey, but even that, I don't follow it the way I used to. I think after the um, Capitals finally won the Stanley Cup, my enthusiasm for the sport kind of waned because it was like, I finally got what I wanted. But outside of that, um, this show is, is about more than just sports, clearly. 
the the sports aspect of the show is minimal. It's just enough for those people who feel like they have to watch sports, but it's about so much more than that. It's, it's so positive in so many ways. And the first season was amazing. They won all of these Emmys and stuff. And the second season has been good too, but a lot of people have complained that it wasn't as good as the first. Well, duh, very few sequels are as good as the first. But I think the main reason why the second season hasn't been as uh, well received as the first season is not because they, you know, did some major changes other than the fact that a particular character has become a villain. And we've slowly been seeing this person turn into a villain. And I think it's kind of heartbreaking because um, everything else about the show has been so like positive. I mean, there have been like, there has been negativity on the show, but it's always like served a purpose. But to see this one particular character turn into a villain, I think maybe that's why a lot of people um, haven't enjoyed the second season as much. And I'm right there with them. But even though I didn't like that aspect of it, I still overall enjoy the second season of Ted Lasso. Looking forward to the next season. And yeah, so have you seen any of these lately? Let me know um, if there's something you want to recommend to me. I'm all for it. Um, you know, I'm going to eventually get around to writing my book reviews. <laughs> but for now, this is what I have going on. So please people stay safe and until next time bye